Welcome everyone. So today has been a, such a hot day. We were planning to shoot outside and it was, it was 37 degrees. So I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. So it was so hot. I was like, you know what? Maybe let's just shoot it in the office. So I want to talk about something very important that everybody's like asking me all the time. People DMing me and they've been asking like, Amrit, can you help us find drivers to dispatch? I'm like, maybe. So that's what I'm going to discuss today with you guys. How can you find truck drivers to dispatch for your business, whatever you have going on? Uh, of course, there's more models to it. So we're going to talk all about it today in this video. So any of you who don't know anything about me, my name is Amrit and I help trucking companies get and find qualified truck drivers. Um, I've been in trucking for a long, long time, been a mechanic, been a driver, been a planner. So anything and everything that you can do with a semi, I've done in my journey and my career. So I want to share with you how you can find drivers for dispatch. Like when, when I hear the word dispatch, I just automatically in my mind, that comes, it's like you're, you're a dispatching company and you wanna find owner operators that you can give loads to and have a business and make money and make profit and whatnot. So it's more so about like finding the right drivers or owner operators, right? Like in technical sense. If you have your own equipment, then of course, then you're looking for a truck driver, but more so when you are just dispatching or like when I hear the word dispatch exclusively, like it's more so when you're looking for owner operators. So I'm gonna discuss both, both of them in this video. And there's some similarities and some differences, okay? When looking for truck drivers and when looking for owner operators. But I'm gonna take the owner operator side first. So imagine if you are a dispatching company, like you run a dispatching company and you're dispatching loads, you're picking up loads from like, you know, um, DAT or truck stop or whatever it may be. And then you're you're looking for carriers or small one or two you know truck guys who want to like do trucking with you and like give you the trucks and run it and get you a driver and whatnot. How do you how do you find more of them? Now you know what? Let me scale back to like how should you even approach to this uh, this phenomena this whole thing because. Me just giving you the tactics is not gonna solve anything. Me just reprogramming how you look at this problem or you look at how to find solution is actually gonna give you better way to address how you can find better carriers, owner operators, drivers for your dispatching business or whatever you're trying to do, cool? Now the first thing you wanna keep in mind is that why should, let's take an example of owner operator. Like why should an owner operator come and work for you? And the reason why I say that is like, all the medium to large trucking companies, anybody who has like more than, I say 60, 50, 100, 30, even more than 30, 40, 50 trucks, they're always looking for, hey, if there's an owner operator, we'll take him, okay? Like, because they have so much freight, like everybody has so much freight to move that they can almost take any time an owner operator. Now, the good thing with those like asset-based trucking companies is that they have, <clears throat> you know, good connections with their insurance, they can pay the drivers, they don't hold the pay on, like the owner operator hold the pay on it. Like, when you're dispatching business, what happens is like, you dispatch a load, you are, you're waiting to get paid from the shipper or you know from the shipper 30 days later and you may hold that money over to owner operator. Now you may use factoring and all that. If you don't know what factoring is, you're basically loaning money to run your trucking business. And factoring is a term that's used just for trucking. But you're borrowing money from a company, keeping some cash flow, so while you receive the money, you have money to give it to them. Or factoring gets the money and factoring gives it to you beforehand that hey, this is what it is. But <clears throat> you gotta keep in mind that the asset-based trucking businesses have more advantage over you for certain reasons. Number one is like, when you think about owner operator, they already have a truck on them, okay? Like they already have a truck on them. It's like their baby. It's, it's like they're, you know, this is so personal to them. That's their next step in their career. So when they look at, when they have their own truck and they, they look at who do I wanna run this truck for, they're looking for security, they're looking for like who's got the best perks and not just perks in terms of like money, but also like who's gonna, who do they feel more safe and secure with? And I'll tell you what that means. You know, like drive, like when you have, when you're an owner operator, 
repair, maintenance, those are big things on your mind all the time. Especially like if you're buying like a truck that's like four or five years used or something like that, or 10 years used, like maintenance could be a big thing that could weigh on your mind. The insurance, you know, like insurance is another thing. So some carriers will offer bobtail insurance and you may have to do like the, you know, the trailer or the cargo insurance. Some carriers may give the, may be like, hey, bring your bobtail insurance owner operator, man, and we will cover the cargo insurance under our policy. So that depends. Now you want to look at as a dispatch business that what can you offer? Are you competitive? Because if I'm an owner operator and you're standing here and I have another asset based carrier here and this guy offers me, hey, I'm going to cover your bobtail and I'm also going to give you cargo insurance. And you're saying like, well, I'm only going to cover your bobtail. You got to cover your cargo. You know, so the offer just changes right there. And then the other thing that you got to keep in mind is like, uh, the consistency in your lanes. Like what kind of lanes and consistency are you offering? Because if you hire an owner operator, let's say you do get someone and you get this guy and now you're just picking up the most hot load that's gonna pay you the most money just to connect the dots and run this guy to like New Jersey, to like Alabama, then to like California, and then back you're just running, running, running this guy, just trying to make the money on your side and not thinking about this person who's on the road, that where is he going? Like, is there a consistency in the lanes? Like he's out for like six or seven weeks or something like that. That could piss a lot of owner operators off. You know what I mean? So that's why the asset-based carriers have a higher success in recruiting uh, owner operator versus like one man kind of show. Like you you do fight the the offers, the things that you that you offer. And you gotta you gotta keep in mind like how can I make it better? You have to work a little bit hard to find better shippers, make better relationships so you're not living off the load board all the time. Because that's not a sustainable business. You may get to like 20 or 30 trucks, but that's the max you're gonna hit. Like you're gonna hit a glass ceiling and that's about it. You, you won't be able to recruit more owner operators. The whole business is gonna be just a mess and a chaos and you won't be able to scale. But I'm gonna show you the tips that are gonna really help you actually get some good owner ops and then you know keep them around for a while. At least you know have to give you the ability to grow your business, maybe even move into like an asset-based carrier and then you have more like authority in the market, in the niche and whatnot. So what you wanna look at is like, your offer is like the big thing. Like what is my competitor offering in the area and what am I offering? The lanes, the kind of uh, you know uh, freight you're gonna be hauling, the kind of driver that you're looking for because if you're looking for a flatbed owner operator, that's different than a drive-in owner operator, right? Uh, drive-in is way easier to handle than flatbed. You could be tarping, tarping, load securement, and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of reasons to like look at. There's no silver bullet to uh, you can get as many flatbed drivers. Uh, you have to understand like who you're after. And if I'm after a certain kind of driver, it's going to be harder versus a drive-in driver if you're looking for a specialized haul and whatnot. So that's one side of the things. The other side of the thing is like just truck drivers. If you have asset, you're almost like a truck driving. You're almost like a trucking business where you're offering company driver position to these drivers. Okay, so, but I'm gonna stick to like the dispatch because that's what, that's what I usually get a lot. Both of these scenarios almost are the same. Um, and the big reason, the big, big shift or the big factor that's gonna make the needle move in your case when you're just a one man show, Try to make yourself a business, then trying to be working from like your home's basement and trying to dispatch loads and trying to think like I'm gonna make a billion dollar trucking business. That's just not gonna happen. So I just wanna break the truth because that's what I get a lot. Like you, you can't just come with the mentality of making a quick buck. Like that's just not gonna happen. You may get few owner operators, but not a high degree of success. So you wanna look at how can I establish myself as a business and how can I tap into becoming an asset-based carrier? Of course, you're gonna carry more risk, of course you need more capital, but that's what it takes to grow to the next level. Okay, so look at like establishing yourself as a brand, as a, I'm not saying like go get a fancy logo and a fancy website, that's not what I'm talking about, but more so about like, you know, having the right structure, not just living off the load board all the time, okay? So that's the big one, one thing that you need to keep in mind. The second thing is you need to advertise and promote yourself as your business. And that's a big mistake that I, that I see all the time, that you're looking for owner operators, but you're saying like, I am JJJ dispatching and my company is this and my dispatching is this. Like it's so jumbled that you can never 
market or advertise to the right owner operators with one unique brand or business. I see that problem all the time. There was actually a couple that came into, I can't remember, they were I think in Colorado or something and they had like few trucks leased to a trucking business or a dispatching company and they were looking for drivers for this business and they were like, Amway, like we don't, we have to supply the drivers but at the same time like we're supposed to find the drivers for these people. So like, how can we market ourselves? How can we advertise for ourselves? So, and I'm like, I'm like, that's a tricky situation. Like you gotta take the name of that business or you gotta have your own business that you promote and be like, hey, this is our business and we have leased our truck to this business. So you're gonna really work for us, but running the loads under their command. You know, so have that clarity when you put your message out there. Um, that's the big jumbled piece that I he see all the time, especially with the smaller, smaller fleets or small time guys. And look into like, you know, doing things where you show who you are and what you do, instead of like just put a little picture and be like, I'm now looking for owner operators, make $10,000 or $12,000, great money. You're, you're not, not gonna get much drivers out of it or owner operators out of it. Like put a video of yourself, maybe hold your phone and put a video of yourself in whatever area that you're in. So let's say, if you are a dispatch company or a dispatch business in Arizona, in Phoenix, and you wanna kinda of make like your freight area, don't just go all over the country, and I said that before too. And then try to look for drivers in that area and say in the video, be like, hey, this is John from AZB, ABCD Dispatching, and I'm looking for drivers in Arizona, California, New Mexico, Colorado. If you're somebody who wants to make X amount of money and be home every night or out on the road for that much time, I've got a great place for you. Don't get robbed by all these asset-based carriers. They care about just their own profit, not yours. I'm here to make sure I put more money in your pocket. So if you put something like this, that will actually show you as a higher person up here, worse of like the asset-based carriers because these are the people that you're really fighting with. You know what I mean? So you wanna make sure you come up above them versus um, competing with them. You know, you have to differentiate yourself in a smarter, better way. So those would, that would be like the biggest hack. And then just throw it on Facebook and then just run a little bit of ad to it, a little bit of traffic to it. Just hit the boost button, go boost a little bit of traffic and you'll get a lot of drivers that will reach out to you and be like, okay, tell me more about yourself and whatnot. But you have to have like a solid core offer too, okay? Like what are you paying for insurance? Who's covering the cargo? What do the loads look like? Where are you gonna be running? Who's gonna supply the trailer or the equipment and yada, yada, yada and so on and so forth. What does your maintenance program look like? Because as I said before, like maintenance is another thing that owner operators always seek security for, where they could feel safe. Like most of these asset-based carriers, they have a maintenance shop. You don't, you're somebody just running off your home or an office that you've rented somewhere. So you need to partner with like a maintenance shop, be like, hey, I need like a preferred kind of customer service. Give me a better rate. I'm gonna bring all my owner operators to you instead of $100 an hour of shop rate. I need like 75, I'm gonna make sure like you get um, regular maintenance, you get oil changes, you tell the, your owner operators, be like, hey, we have a regular maintenance program that, uh, that is scheduled, it's there, you don't have to worry about it, you don't have to tell me, I'm gonna tell you when to bring in and we have this preferred shop that you're gonna go to. All these small things will stack up to make your offer better. Then you're no more like a Joe Blow sitting in their basement trying to make a couple bucks off the load board. Like, you're no more that personality anymore. You're, you're legitimate in business. You have to do that mind shift. And I always say it to everyone, it's like, you want to become an asset-based carrier. If you look at any big trucking businesses, more, there are more asset-based successful trucking businesses than there are just the one that run off like owner operators. There's like two or three, but a company base is like there's hundreds. So that's what you wanna aim for when you get into like the later stages. Anyway, so those were the quick tips on how to find truck drivers or owner operators for dispatch. Um, I know I kind of gave you like an overview of things. If you want me to explain you in more detail, let me know in the comment. I will try to make another video where I kind of go into more drill down details for the segment that you want to know more. Uh, there's so much that I can share with you, but this is all I can in this short video. So let me know in the comments and make sure you like this video comment and let me know what you want to learn more and then hit that notification bell with the subscribe button that way whenever i release this video it always comes to you and there's so many people who are like amrith how can we get more videos that you release all the time when do you release them please let me know 
the way that you're gonna find out is by hitting that notification bell. So go do it right now and I will see you in the next video.